Welcome to Electron Line. Again, to gain a better understanding of what a Fourier transform is, we're going to tackle the concept of the Fourier transform of the delta function in the time domain to the Fourier transform in the frequency domain, and then from the Fourier transform in the time domain where the function equals 1 to the equivalent Fourier transform in the frequency domain. And it turns out that the Fourier transform of a delta function in the time domain equals 1 in the frequency domain, and the inverse Fourier transform of 1 in the frequency domain becomes the delta t in the time domain. Secondly, if we take the Fourier transform of 1 in the time domain, that becomes 2 pi times the delta function of the frequency in the frequency domain, and if we take the inverse transform of this, we should get 1 again. The question is, how does that work? How do we know that's the case? Well, let's go back to the definition of what a Fourier transform is mathematically. If we have a function in the time domain and we take the Fourier transform of that, we get the equivalent function in the frequency domain. So this capital F means it's the Fourier transform of the small f in the time domain. Of course, we get the frequency domain. And the equation is, it's the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function in the time domain times e to the minus j omega t dt. Remember that j here is the square root of negative 1. Conversely, if we have a function in the frequency domain and we take the inverse Fourier transform, we get back the function in the time domain. And that is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function in the frequency domain times e to the j omega t d omega, and again j is the square root of negative 1. So let's apply those equations to the delta function and to the function being equal to 1. So we're going to start out by saying let's take that the function in the time domain is simply the delta function. So when we take the Fourier transform and we try to find the equivalent equation or the equivalent function in the frequency domain, we take the Fourier transform of the function in the time domain which is equal to the integral from minus infinity to infinity times the function, in this case that would be the delta function in the time domain, times e to minus j omega t dt. Now what is that equal to? Well remember back that if you multiply a function, let's call this function here, times the delta function, notice that the delta function is zero everywhere except for t equals zero. In other words, this whole thing here is zero for everything except when t is equal to zero. When t is equal to zero, what we can do then is, then this is equal to e, the function evaluated at zero, which means e to the zero. And of course, e to the zero is equal to one. So by definition, a function multiplied times a delta function and we integrate from minus infinity to infinity by definition that's equal to the function evaluated at zero because that's the only value where the delta function has any meaning and that by definition comes to be e to the zero because the integral of the delta function from infinity from negative infinity to infinity always equals to one. So if that's true then if we go backwards if we then plug in the equivalent function here in the frequency domain and we plug it back in here we realize then that by definition 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function in the frequency domain which in this case is 1 times e to the j omega t d omega of course we need to get back to what we had in the beginning which by definition then becomes a delta function in the time domain. Next we're going to assume that the function in the time domain equals 1. And we're trying to find the Fourier transform of that. So again, we start with the function being equal to 1. We plug that into our Fourier transform formula, the integral from negative infinity to infinity of 1. That would be the function right here. In this case, it's 1 times e to the minus j omega t dt. In this case, we're not quite sure how to integrate that. However, we know that it's probably going to be some constant times the delta function. The only thing left to do is to figure out what this constant is. But to the rescue comes another integral, the inverse Fourier transform. So if we assume that the function is some constant times the delta function in the frequency domain, and so 
that would be the function right here, and we take the inverse Fourier transform, by definition that's 1 over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the function in the frequency domain, which we assume to be this, times e to j omega t d omega. Now, of course, a is a constant, so that can come outside the integral sign. So it gives us a over 2 pi times the integral from minus infinity to infinity of the delta function in the frequency domain times e to j omega t d omega. And now we take a look at this, and we take a look at this integral right here. Those integrals now look identical. With one difference, here we had a negative j omega t, there we have a positive j omega t, but the concept is the same. Whenever we have a delta function multiplied times another function and we integrate from minus infinity to infinity, that will be equal to this function evaluated at zero because when omega is equal to zero, that's the only place where this function has any meaning. Other than that, when omega is not equal to zero, the delta function equals zero, an integral of zero is zero, so it only makes sense to evaluate it at that one spot. And by definition, when we integrate this, this integral right here will be equal to the function evaluated at omega equals zero. So we know that this is equal to a over 2 pi times oop, e to the zero power. And of course, e to the zero power is equal to 1, so this is equal to a divided by 2 pi. Now when we come back over here, we realize that f, oop, I'll take that back. Oh, I made a mistake here. Oh, there's an error. Something didn't look right. <laughs> and I found it right here. This here should be f of t. The function in the time domain equals the inverse transform of the function in the frequency domain. That's why I got a little confused here, but now I realize here's my mistake. So in other words, the function in the time domain equals a divided by 2 pi. Now when we come back over here, we realize that the function actually was equal to 1. In other words, 1 equals a divided by 2 pi, which then necessitates that a must equal to 2 pi. If a must equal 2 pi, that's what we're looking for here, then say, well, this is equal to 2 pi, and then since the Fourier transform of 1 was equal to some constant times the delta function in the frequency domain, and now we know that a is equal to 2 pi, we now know that this is equal to 2 pi times the delta function in the frequency domain. So that then shows that if we have the delta function in the time domain, we take the Fourier transform, we get 1. If we take the inverse Fourier transform of 1, we get the delta function. And if the function in the time domain equals 1, and we take the Fourier transform, we get 2 pi times the delta function in the frequency domain. And if we take the inverse transform of this, we get back 1, the function in the time domain. And this is how we can show that these relationships exist from the frequency domain to the time domain and back and forth, that time domain delta function becomes 1 in the frequency domain, 1 in the time domain becomes 2 pi times the delta function in the frequency domain. And hopefully that helps you see how these functions were derived. That's how we did it.